My next guest fights for the vacant LFA flyweight title coming up here at LFA 14 on June 23rd. Jerome Rivera joins me here on the program for the very first time. Jerome, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, James? I'm doing very well, and uh, we're live on location right now. Where where are we right now? Uh, We are right in front of Latrell's MMA. Very cool. Getting ready to go hit up the wrestling practice and MMA class. Good stuff, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, first time I've had you on the show, i got to ask the natural question. How does a nice guy like yourself get involved in combat sports? Um, always since I was a little kid. It was, uh, I was always really competitive. I really enjoyed wrestling. Um, I was really into anime shows, you know, Dragon Ball Z stuff where everyone's always trying to be like the best fighter, the best what they do. So um, I had always uh, liked wrestling. Like I said, I was competitive. Um, I started watching UFC when I was in about fifth grade. Uh, I think it was around that time. It was when Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell were fighting their second fight. Um, I got really into UFC. Me and my dad started watching it a lot after that, and I kind of just fell in love with it. And it was something that I wanted to try out one day once I got older. Well, it certainly worked out well for you. You got the seven and zero record, like I mentioned, and we got to talk about your last fight, man. Very impressive. You went into Zach Riley's backyard and you come away with a unanimous decision. How happy were you with your performance in that fight at LFA Ten? Um, I was happy with my performance. I feel like I went out there and uh, executed a good game plan against Zach. Um, I, I wanted to use a little bit more of my hands, but I feel like um, with him, I needed to kind of throw a lot of kicks to keep him off of his rhythm. Um, but going out there and fighting my first time with a big promotion like LFA, I was happy with how I performed. It was really fun to do fighting for a big promotion like that. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'd say so for sure. Um, you know, you're only 22 years old. Did you ever feel like you'd be fighting for a major title like this so young in your career? I mean, you do have the 7-0 record, but still, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's really cool. It still um, hasn't really hit me yet that I'm going to be, like, possibly getting a title at the end of this, but... Uh, it's definitely going to be a big accomplishment for me. I'm really excited and, have, uh, yeah, really excited to fight for a title. Really big opportunity for Did me. you feel like a title shot was coming after that last fight? Um, I wasn't too sure if, if I was going to get one at the LFA just because that was my first fight with them. Um, but I had a feeling, you know, since I started getting a few wins in a row now that maybe a title shot might present itself to me sometime down the road. Um, but I'm definitely glad I got it so early. And, and you're taking on uh, Roberto Sanchez, who's also undefeated at 6-0. and uh, How do you feel like you match up against him? Um, I feel like Roberto's a really tough grappler. Um, I feel like I'm a really great matchup, though, for me. Um, I am also have a good background in grappling. Um, no gi jiu-jitsu, gi jiu-jitsu, wrestling. Um, so as far as the grappling goes, I feel like I can match up with him well. He does have impressive grappling. He does look strong, but... Um, I think I'll be able to grapple with him, and then I think striking is really what's going to win it for me. Um, being patient, keeping in my range, using my boxing. I think as long as uh, as long as I'm patient, I think it's going to be a really good night for me. And uh, we just talked about your gym there. Uh, who are some of your main training partners helping you get ready for this fight? Um, main training partners of uh, Jordan Espinosa. He's another flyweight. Um, he's fought for Legacy a few times. I don't think I have to fight for LFA yet. Um, Steven Cervantes, who's also fighting for a title that same night, I believe, in Cal- or the following night in California. Yeah, so he's going to be fighting also. Um, he's really tough. He fights at 145, but he's a good uh, partner for me, as well as Andres Quintana, uh, really a star for Combate Americas. He's really tough. It's nice having all these young guys around me pushing me, and we're all really competitive always every night, in and out. Uh, kind of competing with each other every time we go grapple or every time we strike it's always fun we, me- we mess around but we're all really competitive with each other so that's cool you're all kind of coming up at the same time which is really neat yeah we have a lot of guys even the amateurs too um, we have Javier Cepeda a really good amateur record he's going to start his uh, pro record here or professional now in MMA um, yeah we've got a lot of tough guys here it's a really good young gym to be at and how's the weight cut going getting down to 125 we're a couple weeks out from the fight um, weight cut's going really good. My last two fights were at 135, um, and I was walking around at about 145 for those fights. Um, right now, I'm already on really good pace walking around light. I had said I should be walking around like 137 when I'm eating clean and on a good diet and everything like that, so I'm walking around like 137, 135 already, so I think it's going to be a pretty good weight cut for me. And how do you see this fight ending on uh, June 23rd? Um, Roberto's a really tough opponent. Uh, I think... 
I need to have a lot of patience. I think as long as I'm patient, though, I can get it. Uh, as long as I'm patient, depending on those takedowns, I think I can get the TKO. I love it. Uh, we recently saw Dominic Reyes of uh, LFA get signed to the UFC. Is that anything you're thinking of? Because it seems like the UFC really likes title holders in LFA. Is that something you're looking at potentially fighting for the UFC next? Um, I, I want to get experience uh, with championship rounds. I want to go out there and get this belt. And uh, since I did sign a three-fight deal with LFA, so I want to go and get the experience defending it two times. And after that, if the opportunity at the UFC is, presents itself, that's definitely something I want to make a run for. Yeah, and, and like, like I mentioned there, 22 years old, you got plenty of time to get experience. You're not in a rush. It's more about developing your skill set. So when you do make that jump, you're good to go, right? Yeah, I want to get those five-round fights and uh, just get more experience in there, more cage time, more experience striking with those little gloves. And uh, yeah, I think um, just the more time in there, the better. Like you said, I'm still young. I have a lot to learn in there. So I want to make sure I'm ready when I get to the UFC that I can go a five-round fight with DJ or someone like that if it presents itself. For sure. Now, are you a full-time fighter or do you have a job on the side that sort of pays the bills and everything? Um, so I, uh, I'm, like, I'm a, a full-time fighter right now. Um, I work at UFC gym, so oh, cool. I work there. Yeah, so I'm pretty much always in a gym environment. When I'm over there, I can always like work out at the end of my shifts, and then I go to my strength and conditioning, and I'll go to my practices in the night. So um, I would consider myself a full-time fighter. And right now, I just uh, actually lost a couple of shifts. That way, I can really focus on this fight. So yeah, it's good. And, uh, and obviously, it's, it's a UFC gym, so if you need to take time off, I'm sure they're going to understand. Like as opposed to like working in an office. Yeah, exactly. So yeah really nice working over there I always can uh, hit an extra workout there if I can't make it to class or something is it, is it tough at all being a young guy seeing you know maybe some of your friends going out and partying and doing all this stuff and you know you're training and stuff I know this is what you want to do but is it tough at all to kind of miss out on a lot of that um not really that so much but one thing I was kind of noticing like because I had taken about a 16 month break from MMA a while back um, I saw a lot of my friends uh, going to college and graduating and stuff like that and for a minute, I kind of was uh, just thinking, you know, I put so much time into MMA and I could be going to college and doing stuff like that. Um, I took a little bit of time off and I realized this is what I love. This is what I'm good at. So I'm going to make my run in this. Um, it's not like, I mean, you have short windows in MMA. It's not like I'll be fighting until I'm 45 and something like that. So I'll be able to go to school after. That's true. Unless, That's you're, really Dan, unless you're Dan Henderson, right? Yeah. Unless I'm Dan Henderson, yeah, I fight for another would that be for me 20 20 years i don't know my math's terrible but he's pretty old and he's he's still kicking so uh you know good good for dan henderson they're they're tough yeah uh last question for you here kind of on that same note what do you like doing on your downtime i know uh you probably don't get a lot of uh, time to you know kind of you know chill out and stuff like that but you know do you you watch other sports are you a netflix guy what would i find you doing um recently i've been more of a netflix guy me and my girlfriend when i get my rest time i like to hang out with her and we kind of Netflix and just hang out. Um, but we also enjoy the outdoors a lot out here in Santa Fe and Albuquerque. We go on a lot of hikes and do stuff like that also. So those are two things I like doing, just relaxing, enjoying my rest. I like also going to the outdoors. So. And what are you watching on Netflix right now? Uh, we start so many shows and we just like switch shows almost every night. We just finished Breaking Bad. Um, yes, yeah, so we just finished Breaking Bad. So that was, I've been trying to get my girlfriend to watch that for a while, so. Is, do you notice? One. Do you notice a lot of scenes in Breaking? Because you know, being in Albuquerque, do you see? Is there areas where you're like, hey, I know where that is? Yeah, it's cool. Cause I, uh, I'm from Santa Fe, but I've just been living in Albuquerque like, these last two years for training. So I'm getting to go see all these places. I get all excited, especially now that I've got to see all the all the seasons. Very cool. And I'll tell you what else is very cool. LFA 14. It's a stack card live on Access TV on June 23rd. Uh, Jerome, I can't thank you enough for joining me here on the program. Where can people find you on social media? And if you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. Um, thank you for having me, James. Really excited to be on your show. I've watched a lot of your interviews. Oh, well, um, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, you could find me on Instagram at Renegade Rivera. Um, on Twitter, same thing at Renegade Rivera. Um, sponsors, I want to thank... Uh, damage control for helping me out big shout out to them help me out the mouthpiece um i have zia fightwear for making me some shirts uh, as well as a banner um all my friends all my family everybody for the support um everyone has let me sleep on their couch everyone has helped me out everyone has helped me with food with whatever it was getting ready for this camp thank you to all you guys uh gonna go get that belt june 23rd